Welcome to Waypoint Real Talk, where we discuss real estate and your home. Let's get started with your hosts, Aaron Shashilla and Austin Heinz. Connecticut, buddy. Awesome. That's well, right. Welcome, everyone, to Waypoint Real Talk. My name is Aaron. Austin is behind the scenes today working on the audio and video today. But today we have the awesome Don Hill with Real Producers Magazine. Yes. Welcome, Don. Hey, it's my I'm honored to be here. This is fun. I'm excited. I never, I don't get called awesome too much, so I'm, I'm fired up about it. Well, you are awesome. Well, so. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. I'm so all... are you guys. Oh, look at that, Austin. We're awesome. Waypoint. Home inspection is awesome. Waypoint Real Hill. Talk. Awesome little tagline, too. I like it. And, yeah, it's And the cool. music to boot. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. The music's great. So today we're going to be discussing what Real Producer does, yeah. and that's highlighting these top agents and what makes these top agents so awesome. Mm-hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about your background and what Real Producers is? Yeah, so Tampa Bay Real Producers is a part of a national franchise, uh, which is called Real Producers. We represent about 120 markets uh, across the country. And um, I've been affiliated with the franchise for about two years now. We officially launched in Tampa Bay, though, in January of 2019. And so the premise behind the entire platform is we wanted to create a platform for the top real estate professionals to be able to build relationships and have a unique way for them to cooperate. Uh, one of my favorite terms is the, is the word uh, coopetition. And it's kind of like the thought process behind real estate. It's a very competitive industry, as we all know. So the easy way to look at real estate agents actually connecting and going through social events and, and building relationships with each other, well, it's like, well, why would I want to do that when that person's the, the competition, right? But the reality is, is so much of their business is through co-op business, through other agents that are in other brokerages than the ones that they're used to hanging out with or hearing about at their local team meetings, that we really wanted to provide a platform that would allow them to build relationships with who these other top producers were, since uh, ultimately we believe like, you know, what's the old saying, like uh, uh, all boats, you know, the quote I'm trying to say, right? All, 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 all boats arise uh, to the shore or something to that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, that one was over your head, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the point is, is that the cream rises to the, cr- to the top, I guess, is the oh, point. Okay. And okay, as, long gotcha. as, we, as long as we can provide a platform that get these top people to connect and to build relationships, then we know that it's going to strengthen the entire real estate community. Right. So. So um, those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Real Producers is a combination of a monthly magazine that features, uh, here in Tampa Bay anyway, the top 500 agents uh, in the Tampa Bay market. Uh, To be in that audience, somebody last year would have had to do about $9 million in volume. Uh, To be in that group, they averaged about 40 uh, transactions per agent last year. Um, And in total, they actually represented over $14 billion in volume and over 44,000 transactions. So if you look at the entire Tampa Bay real estate market, that top 500 audience is a pretty big chunk of what that entire market's actually producing. And so ultimately, it's the whole, you know, 80-20 rule or 90-10, I guess, depending on how you look at it. In this case, we we really feature like the top 5% uh, of of agents and brokers uh, in the Tampa Bay market. So... It's been fun for me uh, personally. I, I love real estate. I've read Rich Dad Poor Dad when I was like 18 years old and kind of fell in love with the concept of real estate investing. Uh, I come from a marketing and sales background. I owned a franchise in marketing up in Connecticut, where I'm from originally. But after going to University of Tampa, fell in love with Tampa Bay. Um, did go home back to Connecticut for about 10 years to run my business, run a marketing business. But every winter I said to myself, I got to get back down to Florida again. This uh, Connecticut cold weather is not for me. So you should tell Austin about that. Why is that? He wants to move up north. Does he now? Yeah, yeah. He does. Are you from there? Okay. So what, what, you're, this, you're just too spoiled? You're like, I got to get out of this warm weather? <laughs> it's too hot. It is a little warm down here in the summer times. Well, the, 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 the beautiful thing is you got to have a summer house somewhere up there, and then you stay uh, down here the rest of the year. That's there the you way go, to Austin. Just get, just get a winter house. That's the plan. Yeah. Simple. You yeah. Know? I think we know well, an agent or two. You can Airbnb it if you really have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's been a year and a half since you've been doing Real Producers in Tampa Bay, correct? Yes, yes. How, how has it gone for that year and a half? Has it gone more than you expected? Is it 
to perform. I feel like well? the feedback has been great. I mean, the agents, uh, we get a lot of positive feedback, of course, from every a agent that we have the pleasure of featuring. Um, you know, it, we don't charge an agent anything to be featured, which is one of the things that I think makes us unique is most real estate magazines are a pay to play type model where they have to actually pay to be on the cover or any other feature uh, that they have. That's not the way we do it. We we just feature you based on your success and, and your where you where you rank and where you stand uh, in the Tampa Bay market. So it's it's truly just based on the true influence that they are bringing to the you know to the Tampa Bay community um, as a whole. So nice. we've gotten great feedback. Uh, Waypoint has been one of our partners uh, since the beginning. So it's a quick shout out to you guys. Appreciate all your support for everything that you guys do to help us produce the magazine and obviously the events and all of our social media stuff. I mean, everything comes from our partner, our vendor partners, which is how we pay for the whole, the whole shebang. So mm -hmm. without people like you guys, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to have the business model that we have. Yeah, of course we're flattered. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> um, so obviously you've interviewed and hung out with these top 500 agents and, you know, before COVID we had all those hangouts, those networking events at the local, um, yep. which I honestly really enjoyed. Those were yeah. amazing. Uh, what do you think? We hope to do those again uh, sometime soon. Yeah, I hope yeah. so too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think, or what's the commonality between these top agents? If somebody's looking to be, you know, a top performing agent, what makes these top agents go? Yeah, it's been fun for me to interview. I was recently looking at it, and I've had the pleasure of interviewing over 200 uh, personally, over 200 top agents over the last 18 months, let's say. And I've definitely seen some commonalities in some of the answers to my questions and their, their thought process and their mentality about how they approach their business. So um, I think it would be, you know, uh, worth it to point out a couple common things uh, that I've seen. I mean, I, I would say off the top of my head, definitely most of them have found themselves a mentor somewhere early in their process to be able to learn from. Um, it was unusual to just find somebody who completely had to figure it out on their own and became a top agent, you know, rather quickly. One of the sections that we spotlight every month is called a rising star feature, which is usually an agent who's in their first three to five years, but has still been very successful, broke the top 500 in a short period of time. And I would say pretty much every one of those rising stars that I've uh, had the chance of interviewed have, have partnered up with some team or some sort of a mentor that has showed them the ropes and allowed them to really kind of, you know, get the, the, the challenges and the doubts and the fears that all new people have when they're starting any business, real estate's no different, um, kind of plow through that stuff to focus on specific systems that allow them to grow uh, their business right away. So that, that was one of the things that definitely stood out to me. I don't know if you want me to go through all my, yeah, no. my points now. What do, you, or, what do you think? Yeah, go yeah, for I it. I would say uh, another one that I thought was very common was the concept that the idea of being a true consultant uh, was very uh, was a common distinction that would come up uh, versus I think some people who get into real estate, like, you know, they have dollar signs in their eyes and they look at somebody on a listing appointment as I need to close this person, mm -hmm. right? I, I need to get this contract signed. You know, I, this is how I make money. And that mentality just does not come across in any of the interviews that I've had. And I've talked to agents who do have that mentality. Really? Oh, absolutely. Uh, without a doubt. Yes. Really? You act surprised. Well, yeah. I mean, have you seen Selling Sunset on Netflix? I have not. No. You haven't? Not okay. Yet. So it's Selling Sunset basically is a brokerage called Opperha Oppenheim, Opperheim okay. in Los Angeles. And so they're a high-end agency or brokerage in Los Angeles and it's about all the drama that's within the office and gotcha. also how much they're selling and the mentality there just I guess paints that picture of what a top producing agent in Los Angeles would be right like so the Glenn Gary Glenn Ross type culture see and it's going over my head again like the quote <laughs> oh you got to check that movie yeah that's like hardcore so. sales right there but I guess so boiler room are you familiar with boiler room at all nope okay so <laughs> <laughs> we got to get this guy the program Austin uh, but well, well, I'm not saying that they don't care about their numbers or sales. They obviously do. They're all they all understand the value of being productive. But I would say like the numbers and the success that they have is a byproduct of viewing each one of their clients and 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 viewing themselves as a consultant and truly there to serve. Uh, John Maxwell talks a lot about the concept of servant leadership and how that's such a critical um, component of all successful leaders. And I would say most of these top producers that I've gotten to know are great leaders. You know, they they build big teams in many cases. 
even if it's just like a solo thing and they're building their own business, they're still a leader to their clients. And they're really, they view themselves in that aspect of, of being able to be a great listener and a true consultant. So, you know, for somebody who might be listening, who's not yet in the top 500, if you're a real estate agent and that's your goal is to become one of those top producers, I would, I would encourage you to like, you know, read books from people like John Maxwell about uh, listening skills and leadership skills and the difference between a consultive mentality versus a hardcore sales closing mentality. There's, right. a, big, there's a big distinction there. It's really uh, between hard the two. too, like leadership in general, just from, from the, so the books that I've read, my experience that I've had looking at my past self and like, you know, the high school or college leadership positions, it's, much different to be that really good leader and to be the boss that you should be or you know you could be. Yeah. Um, because you have to really get yourself out of the mindset of like you, you, what you own, what you want personally, your own insecurities. You have to be able to look past that and look towards the person to be able to help them out. Yeah. It's really all that, like I'd love the concept of servant leadership because that really is what it, you think of the idea of being a servant. What does that mean? Um, uh, that's being able to really put somebody else's interests first. Right. Yeah. And that's not easy to do for most people. Um, but I found anyway, in my personal life that the people who do that successfully end up being the most successful, uh, at the end of the day, they, they usually, there's an old quote, I think it was Zig Ziglar that said that if you help other people get what they want, um, in turn, the, you'll end up getting what you want. Um, and so that, kind of resonates with me. And I think that mentality is one, some, one of the common things that I've seen a lot of these top producers have is they're really about serving their clients and providing, you know, extraordinary level of service. Uh, and it's, it's funny, in some cases, many of them were motivated to become agents because they had bad experiences themselves when looking to buy a home and using an agent. And they felt like this is not the way it should be done. I, mm -hmm. I can do this better. Uh, I can provide a higher value of service. And it drove many of them to go out and, and do it their way. Okay. So we have mentorship, then we have servant leadership. Yeah. What else? I mean, a makes... consultant, servant leadership. Right. The other thing that's definitely been consistent that I've seen is 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 the approach that many of them take towards branding their business, towards marketing specifically. And I would say it's that mentality of consistency in their messaging, consistency in their marketing versus being spotty with their marketing approach. And that's probably, the, uh, I think, a truth in probably any successful business, but real estate really is no different from that perspective. But most of these top producers have come up with a brand or a theme, uh, some sort of a message that they want to communicate and they know, and they, and they don't just do that sometimes, it's a consistent flow through all of their marketing material, through all of their marketing messaging, through their social media presence, through the individual listing appointment that they have, like that, that theme and that message stays with them, and it's uh, and it's a consistent effort, it, and it takes time. There's a, I, with my business model being in marketing and 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 really enjoying the concept of like advertising and marketing in many ways, I've had the pleasure of studying what some people would call the uh, buyer's scale, which is the concept that all potential prospects, whether this is a uh, homeowner who wants to list their home, uh, or no matter what the product is that somebody might be selling, we all are on this A to Z scale, right? Uh, a is like, we're a hot lead, a hot buyer, we're ready to sign yesterday. And <laughs> we just need to be in front of you, right? And Z is like, I, I'm your worst possible candidate. Like if I'm if I'm selling a home, I literally just bought a home or just sold a home. And the last thing on my mind is working with another real estate agent, you know, right now. So there's that A to Z scale. Obviously, the reality is most of us are somewhere in between, right? We're in that middle somewhere in, over the time lapse of things. Uh, in your business model, of course, you can use your own uh, analogies, but somebody who just got a home inspection is probably not your best candidate, right? Um, so... The, the art, I think, of smart and successful top producers, and I would, again, say in almost any business, is to know who that desired target market is and really be clear about who that specific people are that you always want to be in front of, and then have your message be crafted in a way that allows them to consistently be moved along that scale. Because eventually, those Z buyers become A buyers again. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of time. No one has a crystal ball, and it's hard to always pinpoint the perfect timing to know when you're going to get the most A buyers that are ready for you at that moment. 
So I think one of the things I've seen is most of these uh, top producers, they, whether I told you earlier that we're going to be doing a panel next Thursday on becoming a, uh, a hyper local expert in specific geographic areas. So one of the things I'm sure we'll dive into uh, is in a quick plug for Denise Antonowicz and for uh, Katie Descharme and for Kristen Fadal. Those are going to be three of the top producers that'll be on our panel next week. But I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about how they were very clear on specifically what their target market was. Now they all three of these guys picked geographic areas. Um, and with that being said, they were then able to create their marketing messages specifically targeting those geographic areas in ways that would probably be different than if they were trying to just reach the masses. Mm -hmm. And so I, I found that to be a common thing. And then the last one I'll point out, unless you want to ask any questions about no, that part. I, yeah, I do have a question. So crafting your message, is that just what makes that agency or that agent unique? Like how, do, how would one, if I was a new agent, think about what message do I need to be crafting? What, what kind of example messages are there? Yeah, it's a great question. In, in general, the first step is to identify what's called your unique selling proposition, right? So no matter what industry that you're in, um, there are brand new agents that I've gotten a pleasure. I, I mentioned earlier the rising star category. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, names are popping into my head of people that even though they were new, they were able to find a message, whether that was like a fun, you know, I, I think of like a Karen Clarkin, for example, you guys might know him. And he, he has a very... His message is about kind of spot, uh, he's spot, spot, um, spontaneity, uh, his social media videos and everything are all about fun. He's kind of like a comedian you know, mm -hmm. that, that you follow, but that's his brand. He's established himself in a certain way. A lot of people are not going to be attracted to that, but the people he wants to work with are very attracted to that. They follow him just because he makes them laugh. And, and they, he becomes a great agent for a lot of those people. I think of others that come to mind, like some people are like, you know, fashionistas and they just, they, they, you know, they dress the part, they love talk, they, they, they look like a fashionista and their social media is branded that way. And yes, they sell homes and they work with that, but they attract a different type of clientele. I think of someone who specializes in say luxury real estate, and that's a different image than your, than an agent who's going to be focused on volume in your average three hundred four hundred thousand dollar $400,000, you know, uh, average home here mm -hmm. in Tampa Bay. So it is about finding, you know, what niche do you want to really specialize in and what do people in that niche look for? Who, what are the type of people that they're going to be comfortable um, connecting with and wanting to represent one of their most valuable assets, which is their home? Right. I guess that makes a lot of sense when you look at it. What's your audience? Who do you want to target? And yeah. then you can kind of think of your u unique selling points, your USPs yeah. to, to craft your message. So what's our next one that... that the other one that I thought was that was interesting to me was the the concept that I wrote down um, people that are top producers have conviction in what they're doing versus just confidence in what they're doing. And what I meant by that was uh, I think sometimes confidence can ebb and flow. Like we can be confident in moments mm -hmm. and then it, that confidence can be shattered by maybe an external situation or even, even something internal that shakes our our confidence, you know, our, we have all have self doubts and that sometimes can eat at us. And so ultimately I feel like the people though, that I've had the pleasure of interviewing, they, they generally have a true conviction that what they're doing is needed in the real estate community, that they're truly adding immense value. They're not just selling homes, they're changing people's lives. They're, they're helping somebody with the biggest you know, decision in, in their life with buying and selling, you know, their biggest asset. Um, they're you know, literally like establishing an environment for families to thrive, you know, for years to come. And so that's a different perception. It's a different mentality. And that's different than just having confidence that, yeah, I sell homes, you know, I, I write contracts and I, you know, I, I go out and make some money by, by flipping contracts. Like when you have a true conviction in, in your purpose, and what you're all about, that comes across very differently. It comes across like, you know, little things that happen don't shake that conviction. And that's where that shows up, in my opinion, is, you know, things like we've seen recently with, with the craziness with COVID. Looking back at like 2000 and, you know, seven to 2008, 2009, when the market, you know, tanked uh, under the uh, recession that we had, it, you saw the amount of people that had real estate licenses back then, the ones who fell out of the business were not the top producers, right? The ones who fell out were the ones who had a license, but I think more were under the mentality that they, 
you know, felt confident because they had a license and they thought that meant something. But the ones who had conviction in like who, what they, who they were and what they represented to the industry, they were the ones who, who thrived during those times because they knew that they now can provide even more value to everybody who needed them because all the fakers, so to speak, fell out of the market. Mm -hmm. um, and even with this COVID thing, like it's been fascinating to interview people that um, are top producers right now. And I was telling you guys earlier, like the feedback I'm getting right now is I've never been busier. This is, uh, I'm having one of my best years ever. Uh, some people just recently were telling me that they are, they've already beat what they did all of last year and it's only August. And this is with the it's just he hectic, a hectic environment, you know, that we're all in. But that, I don't think I'd be getting that messaging if I was talking to somebody who was not in the top 500. Right. Um, if I was talking, there are 18,000 licensed agents in Tampa Bay, and most of them sell less than five homes a year. So to be in that top 500 means something, and they have a different mentality on what on the type of value they bring to the table. So I, that, those were the three things that really stood out to me uh, in most of my interviews is that, that, you know, I guess four things, being a mentor. Uh, being a, a consultant and having that servant leadership type mindset, uh, being consistent with their advertising and their marketing and their messaging, and then that idea of having true conviction in their value and what they represent versus just you know being confident in what they represent. Um, those common themes have come up, I would say, in almost every interview that I've ran so far. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really great insight. So I want to jump into why should an agent come on real producers have you had any agents that are like eh, i don't want to be interviewed or yeah when we were real when we were new at, this hasn't happened in a while now i think right. our, our brand is starting to get out there but when we were new and no one even knew what it meant i think well i mean and i get that the natural thought when you first contact anybody especially a top producer is what are they selling me right, right. so <laughs> that's normal um i mean i come from the side where i actually was selling stuff to agents uh in my previous uh, franchise before this so i totally get that mentality because they are swamped with people who want something from them, right? So I, I totally understand that. It's usually a breath of fresh air when we're able to just kind of clear the air and say, hey, to be honest, I'm not selling you anything. I'm not asking you to buy anything at all. All we want to do is feature you and tell your story because you're a top producer. Right. And uh, then it just makes the conversation, of course, uh, you know, that a much lot more smoother. relaxed. And, yeah. Now, once we've done this for a while, we've been out a year and a half. But I, I, can't, I don't I can't even remember the last time somebody now most of them are coming to me, you know, mm -hmm. and, and asking me, you know, when can I get featured? Get me in the calendar. And, and it's not easy to feature everybody every month. You know, we're, right. we're putting out about four to eight features a month right now. We have a, a lot a stockpile of content that is good to see. That's great. Um, that that's going to be coming in the rest of this year and even into next year at this point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like these podcasts. I think at the start, it was kind of like running slow. We have to really reach out to our network. But, you know, as it grows, it kind of realized anybody can come in here. We're not here to talk about home inspections. We're here to talk about the, the educational and what you're going to bring, what special, unique insight you have. Yeah, so, absolutely. And that what I think you guys are doing is great, by the way. We're in a world that you need content, you know, and yeah. content is king. And anything you could add, anytime you can add value and position your brand with some sort of value content, then it's a smart move. So you guys are doing a great job. Yeah, if you haven't uh, read the book, and I'll kind of shout it out to everyone watching too, is Utility. Um, that book, I went to a conference, a home inspector conference, this home inspection company in Minnesota, huge home inspection company, uh, read the book and all he did was blog for 10 years. Mm. And that's the only thing he did for marketing, just blog once a week for 10 years. Yep. And he's built his website to over 500,000 sessions a month. Wow. Um, so millions of sessions every year. And s since I've read that book, I've kind of put that to waypoint. We've been blogging three times a week. We started doing the podcast, and now we have over 4,000 users last month on our website alone. It's awesome. Um, just by, like you mentioned, just bringing that content. Mm -hmm. um, so shifting focused, let's relax with the COVID situation. What do you think it's going to happen for the rest of the year in COVID? <laughs> I want to get... I knew the answer to that <laughs> question. I, I want to get your insight on this. What do you think the real producers are thinking? And what do you think it's, what do you think is going to happen? Specifically in the real estate market, you're asking? Yeah. 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 I mean, thankfully, like I said, my experience has been mostly surrounded by these top producers, and I don't feel like most of them have been negatively impacted at all um, by this COVID thing. So I don't feel like on a negative side, any of them are thinking that this is going to hurt them, you know, mm -hmm. moving forward. What do I think is going to happen as far as how it affects real estate? I mean, right now, my understanding is that there's definitely a... Uh, 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 lack of inventory, 
that's out there. So how homes that are being listed are selling very quickly. And I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not the real estate expert on cycles of markets and how that's going to pan out. But I would imagine that that's probably going to continue for a while, at least throughout the rest of this year going into next year. And uh, it'll be interesting to see once the election is past us, you know, if that makes a difference at all with uh, some of the, uh, we all know some of the craziness that goes on during election years and some of the manipulation of markets and stuff mm -hmm. of that nature. So you would think that there might be some things that would open up a little bit uh, going into next year uh, when some of the fears are hopefully, you know, uh, who knows, maybe on November, what's the election? November 4th, right? So maybe on November 5th, COVID won't even be a thing anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to find out. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, well that's say, pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome insight. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Did you have some last minute like plugs that you want to throw in there? No, I already uh, threw out the three. Uh, definitely join us next Thursday if you can. We'll be on our Facebook page, Tampa Bay Real Producers. Uh, join us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, Tampa Bay Real Producers. Our website is tampabayrealproducers.com. You can see some of the cover features that we have on there. We've done over the last year and a half. Um, but if you are a, a top agent who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, uh, I look forward to it. Feel free to reach out to me on any of those platforms that I just gave you. And if you're maybe even a potential vendor, uh, one of the things I will throw out there that we, I would love to meet are some more custom home builders. That's a category really? that we just don't have enough partnerships in. Mm -hmm. And so people that are specialized in building or custom home builds, and if you like the concept of uh, building relationships with top agents and you want to talk more about what that looks like, I'd love to to have a cup of coffee with you or even talk over Zoom if that's what you're more comfortable with uh, to figure out if we should partner together. But that, that would be a category we'd be interested in, in making some connections in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Don. If you have any questions, you can for sure comment below. You can also visit the blog on our website where I'm going to type this up into a you're nice little blog. Camera right there. Yeah, we're looking at that one. You can look at that one. What, which gotcha. one? You can look at Austin if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but thank Thanks you so for much having for, me, guys. It was yeah, fun. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great one.